I remember growing up, my mum would always say, be careful what you ask for, that there are things that, well, what if you get them? What then? And is it really going to help you? Is that toy that you are so hankering after going to last more than five minutes before you break it, Joe? Uh, or is it going to deliver the kind of joy and satisfaction? It, it might, but think about it. Be careful what you ask for. Uh, there are all sorts of things when we get them actually do us damage. Uh, and there are all sorts of things that when we ask for, if we got them, we wouldn't know what to do. We, in, in our passage today, Peter asked for something and uh, he gets it. And I, well, be careful what you ask for. Let's uh, pray and get into God's word. Father, thank you for Matthew's gospel, for what we've been learning about Jesus, the challenges he's issued us and we pray please that we would learn about how to have faith and what that means what that looks like whether quantity matters or the object and and how us to know what to do with that in jesus name amen we're in matthew chapter 14 and we pick it up at verse 22 immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds after dismissing the crowds he went up on the mountain by himself to pray Well into the night he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat was already some distance from land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. Jesus came toward them, walking on the sea, very early in the morning. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them, Have courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter asked him, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. And when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught hold of him and said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those in the boat worshipped him and said, truly, you are the son of god well it's a very famous incident uh not especially jesus walking on the water and all kinds of people over the years have tried to dismiss it explain it away like they the liberals have done for 200 years trying to explain why the miracles never happened and you know popular theories about well actually there was a a very low jetty going out of the water that the disciples are in the boat they didn't see it and Jesus walked out and appeared that he was walking on water. And so when Peter jumps out, he jumped into the wrong part rather than jumping onto the dock where Jesus was saying, you could safely walk towards me. It's a handy explanation. It's dismissive of the power of God, but it doesn't explain a whole bunch of things. And it's not really realistic about the situation. Uh, for a start, these uh these are fishermen who are used to the the stuff. It's it's a it's right out into the sea, and they're so far out that uh, the the waves are wild, and the boat's not getting anywhere. They're really struggling. That's not the place to put a very low jetty, right? If you're going to put it right out in the sea, you make it ten meters up in the air, and it's plain to all. And if anything, Jesus would appear to be floating in the dark and stormy night rather than walking on the water. But also, it doesn't explain their reaction. They, these guys know what they're doing. They, 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 they know the terrain, the area. They've been, sailed this sea. They've fished this sea for years. Uh, and in their reaction at the end of the thing is, surely this is the Son of God. You are the Son of God. You don't do that when you know, well, he's just a guy walking over there. Yeah, so uh, this really happened. But what's the significance of it? What's it about? Peter is going to ask for something that, well, when he gets it, he's really not sure about it. And he asks for something else and he really gets that and he's very glad for that as well. Uh, what's the situation? Well, remember, Jesus has just fed the 5,000 men plus the women and children. There's uh, six to 15,000 people he's just fed from five loaves of fish, five loaves and two fish. Uh, and it's gone well into the night and he's dismissed the crowds, the ones that are no longer hungry. Uh, he said, you can go home now. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, he sends the disciples on because remember, he was going to the lonely place, the remote place to be alone. And the crowds followed him, which is when he had compassion and fed them. Now he sends them away. He sends the disciples. He says, go ahead. If you get on the boat, I still want to be alone. And he spends the most of the evening into the early morning in prayer, uh, in private devotion with his heavenly father. 
and uh, he finally gets that peace and quiet that so many of us want. But Jesus needed it, and it's a it's part of being human. Jesus is God become man, and so he he needs the rest and he needs the time to recharge and also to to uh, speak with his Father in heaven and build that relationship and connect. So he sends everyone away. The disciples are going. They're struggling because of the windy weather that's out there. Uh, they know how to sail a boat, and they're, they're going poorly out there. Jesus, he's done his time alone. He's going to head out to the disciples, and he's walking water. And that's that's amazing. That is so amazing. Uh, I mean, another aspect of it, they say it's a ghost. Right? This is not something humanly possible. This is not something that they're expecting. This is not someone walking on a jetty. This is someone gliding across the top of the, the, the stormy sea and presumably going up and down with the waves as well, uh, walking on top of them, not bobbing in them but walking on them and they are frightened they they're scared they cried out in fear uh, and it would be a terrifying sight when you see something that is just I mean healings well the doctors are healing people but you know Jesus does it very quickly this is something that no one can do he stilled the storm in the past and but they see him now and this is a step above yet I mean he's he is the total master of this world of creation at this point he can cause it to be solid so that he walks upon it uh, and and he does it and um, he calls out to them to have courage right I don't want you to be scared I want you to just recognize me it is I don't be afraid there is nothing to fear with me in the picture well Peter's not quite sure and so that's when he asks this really strange request lord if it really is you command me to come to you out in the water and this will show that jesus has authority over creation not just for his own benefit but uh, he can do things for people as well and so he says yes come and climbing out as peter starts doing the same he's walking on water now some of the other extreme want to say well if peter can do it well anyone can do it and if you just have enough faith we can go around walking on water flying in the air doing all kinds of superhuman uh, superhero type things that's that's not really what's going on here this is a specific request from peter that jesus granted in the moment and uh he starts walking towards jesus but he's then afraid because he starts looking around thinking wow the wind's up the waves are, are going crazy right, this is a, a terrible way to die and he starts panicking and he sinks uh, and cries out as his last request lord save me and jesus is more than happy to save peter uh, he reached out his hand caught hold of him and said to him you have little faith why did you doubt so jesus has saved him but he also wants to teach him a lesson right you ask for something which is ridiculous to most human beings you it was granted to you and then you doubted me right you just keep coming right? i i said yes and so go with it right you've been praying for something and god grants you it well thank god for it right uh, you don't look around going did this really happen i'm not really sure uh and god's thinking oh, i gave that to you <coughs> So, uh, you of little faith, why did you down? And that, when they climb into the boat, is why they say, truly you are the Son of God. Not only is He the Master of creation, but also He can help, He saves, but also more than that, He can help Peter do things that no one else could possibly do. They know Peter. Peter's just a normal bloke. He's a fisherman. He's, walk, he's uh, sailed on the water many times. He's obviously never walked on the water before. So the question comes down to this question of doubt and faith. And we were talking on Sunday about what is faith. And we said it's trust. Trust It's reliance on something that's proven trustworthy. Peter knows that if this really is Jesus and not a ghost, that he is infinitely trustworthy and he's prepared to trust him. And so he asks the request in order to, to test whether this really is Jesus the real Jesus or just a figment of his imagination and uh, you might say well the testing God is is not on but uh, in this case 
Uh, Jesus is trying to reassure him and says, okay, you want at it? Well, let's go, you come. Uh, and so Peter, um, with trepidation, steps out and goes well for a while, but then doubts. And, and Jesus critiques him and says, you have little faith. And so we, on Sunday we were talking about, well, what's the more important, the, the amount of your faith or the object of your faith? And in one sense, they're both important, but really the object of your faith is the most important thing. That's what Peter was testing. He was saying, Jesus, is that really you? I want to know, and this is how I'll know, uh, by this odd request, this impossible task. Uh, and it really is Jesus. Uh, but knowing that, and even succeeding in that, Peter then doubts. And so the, the quantity of the faith is going to uh, determine exactly how far he's going to go with Jesus and whether he's going to uh, lose his bottle uh, along the way. And that's what Jesus is critiquing. Okay, you set up this test, I gave it to you, and then you said, oh, I don't believe it anymore, right? Why did you set up the test in the first place? And so Jesus is calling us to trust him and trust him completely. That when he says, come, we come. When he says, go in his name, we go in his name. When, we, when, we, when he calls us to live, to act, to put our life, build our, build our lives on his words, as the end of the Sermon on the Mount, that be like the wise man who builds his house on the rock, that we will do that, absolutely, that we're all in. We want to be all in with Jesus. Uh, Peter, at this moment, he was half in with Jesus, and he then got way out of his depth. Uh, it's all in. That's what Jesus is calling us to do. And so don't doubt him. Right? Jesus really, I mean, he's proving here he really is the Son of God. Right? Who else can do these things? But also he acts in love to save, to, uh, to comfort, to uh, save us in the end. And uh, who else is worth trusting? Put your trust in Jesus and be all in. Don't be half in. Be all in, unlike Peter was at this moment. Let's pray. Father, please help us to be all in with Jesus. We pray when he speaks that we'll listen. We will trust what he says. When he says, come to him and follow him and take up our cross daily, we pray that we would do that, that we wouldn't treasure our lives um, and, and the things of this world above you. Help us to be all in with Jesus. And we pray uh, when uh, we ask for stuff that, uh, and you grant it to us that we will thank you for it rather than uh, forget about it and doubt. Help us to ask for things that are good for us uh, and uh, to think about what, what we ask for ahead of time. We pray, please, that you might help us each day to keep trusting you when it's hard, when there's opposition, when there are wind and waves and things battering us, uh, when it doesn't look like your word is powerful. Help us to keep trusting in the midst of all the circumstances of life. Help us to honour you in, with everything we've got and be all in for Jesus. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.